and we've got to talk about Cole Lossell on both teams. It's not mm -hmm. something that we've seen across the border. Only a, a few players bringing it to this tournament, uh, but they've be definitely got very different kind of support crews around them. Uh, there's a number of similarities, but then there's those two Pokemon differences that I think are going to be key in this matchup. Celesteela and Indeedee for Miguel with the Moltres and Incineroar for Wolf. Yeah, everything else is going to be the exact same on both of these teams from the Pokemon choices of Dragapult, Colossal, Gigantamax, Rillaboom, and that Urshifu. Um, so, you know, you're taking a look at how these Urshifu especially are going to be able to play a role on these teams to not only potentially use something like Aqua Jet to be able to proc the weakness policy, um, but then also the Steam Engine ability on the Colossal and also threatening the opposing Colossal on the other team. It's going to be a tough matchup, I think. You've got to be cautious. Uh, when both of you are trying to play the, the Colossal option on your team. Um, so both these players are going to have to dig really deep into their experience with the game and understanding what your opponent is doing alongside what you're trying to do and, and execute flawlessly as well. Well, before we get into the match, let's go ahead and talk about these players in depth just a little bit more. Miguel Pedraza Caballero has had two top 32 finishes at both EUIC and Worlds in 2019. And on the other side of the board, it feels like Wolf Glick has done it all. Not only has he been an international and a nationals champion, he was also a world champion in 2016, and he's also been a... Um, uh, a champion in basically every single format that we've had so far. Yeah, I mean, this is one thing to kind of round out the complete set for, for Wolf. Uh, he's done the old nationals, the internationals as they're now known, uh, and then of course worlds, regionals thrown in there as well. So uh, the Players Cup, something he hasn't got on there, definitely a little bit unique and something he'd like to add for probably completionist sake. Yeah, well, these two players are definitely going to give it their all, especially when we are in that loser's round three match. Um, you know, there's just so much on the line here, being able to move your tournament life forward, as well as just kind of solidifying a higher placement in the Players' Cup too. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what this match is going to bring. I'm definitely excited to get into it and see how these players execute these Colossal strategies against an opposing Colossal. In Players Cup 1, we only had, when we got to the finals at least, one player using it, and it definitely kind of skewed a number of matchups. But when you've both got it, how do you go about getting yours set up and not letting your opponent set theirs up as well when it comes to getting both Steam Engine and Weakness Policy activated? It could be really, really close, and it could come down to a difference in those two Pokemon differences that we saw across the two teams. You've got slightly different ways to support and, and help your team out and maybe that's going to be the difference maker. Well, let's go ahead and find out, shall we? See whether or not those two Pokemon differences really are going to be that big change factor between these two teams and jump right into the action in this game number one between Miguel Pedraza Caballero and Wolf Glick. The leads are going to be super important here and when they take the field, that's what I'm really excited to see where the commitment is to how to execute this strategy. Wolf's taken uh, one very clear route where it appears Miguel has gone a little bit differently, showing one of his uh, unique Pokemon in this matchup. Yeah, that Indeedee is going to be one of those more unique choices on Miguel's team. And so you can see that already hitting the field, setting up the terrain here. And it, uh, already Wolf is kind of pushing out that pressure, though, of that Urshifu Colossal lead that we were talking about, where you are running the Rapid Strike Urshifu that has access to a move like Aqua Jet to be able to go ahead and just kind of get the ball rolling with that Colossal. But... Miguel smartly kind of says, hey, well, I think you're going to bring Colossal here. I'm just going to go ahead and bring my Urshifu and see how that works. There is always that horrible situation where you obviously do a lot of damage when you land a water type move on your own Colossal. And then uh, you don't want to get followed up on another water type move. It's not like you get an extra weakness policy boost or anything. So being very cautious about that, I think, is something that's forced this early switch from Wolf into the Rillaboom, which could be a phenomenal switch. It also changes the terrain, which is pretty key here. It does. And that means that Miguel in this position might want to switch out the Ndidi here and might be a little bit more on the back foot, but it's a very passive turn for both of these players where Wolf is just going ahead and use a detect here on his own Urshifu and bring in that Rillaboom, which is going to take the surging strikes really beautifully. Oh, of course. It's the perfect switch in to those surging strikes. Yes, they're critical hits, and yes, Urshifu does a lot of damage, but 
really not the damage you want to see out of a move like that. We're used to it taking big knockouts uh, and barely even bringing the Rillaboom, particularly after the Grassy Terrain recovery, below three quarters of its health. So a really good switch there for Wolf, and he can now probably start to amp up the pressure a little bit on his side. He's got control of the terrain, that means he has access to Grassy Glide, and if this indeed he is relying on the terrain or wants to at least try and reset it so that the Rillaboom can't just throw out immediate uh, Grassy Glides with priority, then it's something that he has to be cautious of, and that switch could be punished depending on what he has in the back. If he has options in the back that don't want to come in against an opposing Urshifu, then it gets a, a little bit tricky for him. So I'll be curious to see exactly how he decides to, to play out this turn. Um, and it looks like switching on the Urshifu as well, not letting those uh, grassy glides connect. Yeah, or just going ahead and saying, hey, I'm going to bring in my own Rillaboom to take the Grassy Glide for it. And that's not going to do very much damage either, as now it's time for a Surging Strikes to come through from Wolf's Urshifu, which is also going to go right into the Rillaboom. So a very fantastic switch from Miguel, very defensively oriented to be able to eat up the damage that's been coming through on the board. It's really so far a game of, of two fantastic Rillaboom switch-ins here, and both trainers getting good value out of that switch in. Uh, the Indeedee following up though and getting a significant amount of damage down on that Urshifu. Uh, obviously you probably need to hit it twice based on the use of focus sashes and, and being able to break that and deal huge damage so the second hit is, is easy to find is, is really nice. Yeah, absolutely. And you could see that the, the Rillaboom on Miguel's side is kind of hovering over U-turn here. Maybe just another way to posture for position on the board to either bring maybe that Urshifu back in or whatever that fourth and final Pokemon might in fact be. Um, I think that's a great option to have on a Rillaboom and we'll we'll see whether or not, you know, Wolf decides to go for something kind of similar on his side of the field because he has access to U-turn too. Both trainers carrying U-turn does help out against the opposing Rillaboom, and considering how important they've been uh, so far in this game across two turns, we've had two switch-ins to Rillaboom that have been great defensive switches, uh, eating up really important moves from both sides, uh, have been really, really smart. No U-turn, just the manual switch out from Warfare. Yeah, manual switch out for Dragapult. So Dragapult will be the fourth and final Pokemon for Wolf revealed in this game number one. As you can see, the follow me coming through from Miguel's and Didi, just to be able to pull the attention away from whatever is going to be happening on the other side of the board. So Surging Strikes now coming in from Wolf's Urshifu will be able to bring this and Didi to below half of its HP. But now it's time to go ahead and see what this Rillaboom is going to do here as it goes for the Dragapult. Decides to get out of here, uh, does switch out with the U-turn, so not sticking around for the full duration of the game. And getting out there pretty wise, uh, we do get to look at the full four, of course, from Miguel. And, and that gives us a little insight into maybe how he's trying to position for the rest of the game. Uh, something to just be cognizant of as you look towards the end of the game. He still has a Colossal available and still wants to be able to set that up nice and easily. That said, we seen in previous players cups and, and previous rounds and previous uses of this colossal team it looks like wolf actually has two ways to to try and set up his colossal for a big end game and so mm -hmm. that means his urshifu is not quite as valuable as miguel's where miguel must keep his urshifu intact on the field and, and able to deal the damage or at least deal a little bit of damage to set up his colossal if that's how he wants to end the game Absolutely. I'm really glad that you pointed that out because you have both Urshifu and Dragapult on Wolf's side of the field that can, you know, Dragapult can go for Surf, Urshifu can go for the Aqua Jet there. But Miguel's only option to be able to utilize that Colossal that's been sitting patiently in the back is that Aqua Jet to be able to kind of self-proc the weakness policy as well as activate that steam engine. But Wolf now continuing to make those switches using that rotating door of Pokemon brings out the Rillaboom once again from just a classic switch on the field as we see Ndidi go for yet another, another follow me here. But I believe that's Breaking Swipe coming through from Dragapult. And that's going to do a lot to just be able to get some spread damage on the field. And Rillaboom once again just tanking those hits. That's uh, Breaking Swipe. Uh, obviously a number of really good benefits to using that move. Number one, doesn't get caught by follow me. Fantastic. Uh, and then lowers the stats of your opponent, which is going to help out when it comes to taking these hits a, a little bit further down the line. So 
Uh, the Urshifu there, you see it already, the close combat just underwhelming, in my opinion, on that Rillaboom. And, and once again, uh, we've still not seen any knockouts, but both players have just been so conscious of, of making sure they're in the right position. And the Rillaboom switch in there, absolutely essential. He doesn't lose his own Urshifu, and he gets his Rillaboom in, and it doesn't take all that much damage either. Um, the Urshifu has also dropped its defenses, thanks to that uh, attack, so it's definitely looking a little bit easier to pick off. And another switch comes through from Wolf's side of the field. I feel like we haven't really seen a turn where one of these trainers doesn't switch out a Pokemon here. And it is all about posturing for position. So Wolf taking that Rillaboom out to be able to bring that Colossal onto the field. Maybe going for something big here or just hoping that, you know, you can get that set up with those screens going from that Dragon Pult. Well, setting up the screens is, is always helpful. And that's actually a completely free turn. To do it, I mean, there's no drawback to that. The follow me and, and detect combination it means there's no damage threat, and that's that's essentially a free screen. Um, the grassy terrain is gone. The Rillaboom is going to be able to set that up a little bit later when it comes back in. Um, but this Colossal is is kind of sitting in a position where it is staring down an opposing Urshifu, but it is next to its friend Dragapult, which which could help out there a little bit. So certainly the option to maybe try and and just surf, uh, get rid of the. Uh, Indeedy would be a bit of a stretch, Indeedy's not that low, and of course Surf isn't doing that much damage, but, um, you know, you're not getting too much damage back if, if that's the case. So I'd be curious to see exactly how this turn plays out, if Wolf maybe just sits on the Dragapult for a little bit more, sets up a little bit more kind of gameplay throughout this one, uh, for kind of the end game situation that he wants, or if he decides to just go for it. I mean, this is the second time we've seen the Colossal, and it's in a great position to, to at least try and get a set up. Or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just expecting that another attack is going to come through into that slot. Really not feeling like this is the appropriate moment to go for that Surf or go for the Gigantamax on that Colossal. Bringing Rillaboom back in and hoping that's going to catch yet another attack coming in from the Urshifu. We did just see Miguel use Detect on that Urshifu a little bit before in that uh, last turn. So you can kind of expect here that an attack might be coming up from that Urshifu again. Plus... Dragapult gets a chance to go for Breaking Swipe again, and here comes those Surging Strikes. Oh, it's, a, it's a classic uh, bait and switch there from Wolf. He's put his Colossal on the field with the option to set it up, and he's caught Miguel there so well. He said, look, here's my Colossal. Look at it. It's next to a Pokemon that can surf. You want to hit it. You want to hit it. Whoops, it's a Rillaboom, and he's changed that out. <laughs> In the same turn, he's managed to land another Breaking Swipe, lowering those, those stats. Uh, and getting Indeedee really, really low as well. I don't know the exact amount it's doing, and obviously there's there's room for a little bit of recovery with the grassy terrain now, but it's just getting lower and lower. The Urshifu's also sitting on the field, taking these drops to its stats and not switching out yet. Uh, I think what Wolf's trying to do here is, is force awkward board positions from Miguel, where he never gets the Urshifu in, maybe next to his own Colossal. Um, you know, it's just really tough, and he also just needs to kind of finally get rid of this Indeedee. The Indeedee's been sitting around for a very long time, causing problems, I think, with the Follow Me, um, because it makes end games a little bit harder when you can draw away attacks for a very low health Pokemon, and it finally leaves the field knowing how low it is, um, and we'll see exactly how Miguel wants to, to try and set this one up. He's now got uh, the, you know, Urshifu and Colossal combination, which could be quite dangerous. Wow, but look at how much damage that's gonna do to that Colossal. On the switch in there, Colossal takes a major chunk of damage coming in from Rillaboom, and I feel like that just puts Colossal in that position where it's gonna get knocked out by something, even if Urshifu decides to go for the Aqua Jet here. It's such a dangerous position to be in. Obviously, you can uh, Gigantamax it and boost its health pool, and that helps out a lot, but taking so much damage on the way in is really, really bad for Colossal. Uh, it's something that, you, obviously, you're going to take a good chunk setting up your own... When you self-activate your Steam Engine Weakness Policy, because you are so weak to those Water-type attacks, the trade-off is usually very, very worth it, but it, it becomes very dangerous to, to try and make those plays that easily, especially when your opponent could, could maybe even land, you know, something like another Grassy Glide in before that, and then you've got to be cautious. You can't knock out your own Colossal on the same turn that you set it up and, and of course, try and... Uh, Gigantamax it. Well, Urshifu is going to come in for Dragapult on Wolf's side of the board. And 
I really like that play coming out from Wolf just because, you know, you still want to preserve Dragapult for a little bit later. You had those two options for that setup for your own Colossal that you mentioned before, Adam. And you can kind of, at this point, take a look at this Urshifu and, and, and almost sacrifice it in a way if you were expecting some type of move to go into that slot. So now that you can see the activated weakness policy as well as the Steam Engine ability on Miguel's Colossal, it's ready to go. And we know exactly where this is going. It's a good trade-off though, I mean, you, you've got that set up. It is at half health, but you are obviously a huge threat right now to, to be able to start landing these huge knockouts. And he's also gonna set up the G-Max Volcalith nice and early. Uh, he gets a knockout on the Ushifu, which is a, a nice a nice kind of place to land it uh, on the way in. But those bits of residual damage, I think, are gonna start to, to slow Wolf down. That said, he's not even set up his Colossal yet. He still has his Dynamax or, or Gigantamax choice in play. And that's kind of an end game that he can maybe just try and, and work through. Um, but Miguel losing the Urshifu in that turn it, right after it did exactly what it needed to do, I think. Mm -hmm. I think that's okay, right? It, it, the Urshifu got its job done, so now it's time to be able to get that free switch and break something else onto the field. Uh, Wolf's Colossal is still sitting very, very safe, though. But what the difference here is, is that... Well, Miguel's Colossal already has that Steam Engine ability activated, and Wolf doesn't have a partner next to it right now to be able to activate the same type of effects on his own Colossal yet. No, and that Colossal on Miguel's side is going to be moving first because of the Steam Engine. Of course, there are options such as Rillaboom with priority that may be able to try and ignore that, but indeed he should at least take away one of those hits. And the Colossal now, with its boosted HP because of its being Gigantamax, really in a good position to, to try and just steamroll through the end of this game and, and go and do exactly what it can. I think Miguel has to be careful not to just trade too kind of silly, um, just trading back and forth. Um, and he's still going to be conscious of keeping that, that Colossal safe on, on his side of the field. Mm -hmm. Definitely needs to keep that Colossal safe because that's the main damage dealer of the team, especially now that your Urshifu is down for the count. So... Uh, but but look at this. No setup necessary here, it looks like. It, it kind of just seems like Wolf's going to go ahead and just hit the go button. And it is going to be that Colossal Gigantamaxing on his side of the field too. So maybe hoping that if Miguel does target it down, that this Colossal can survive an attack from that plus two weakness policy boost. Or just go for something like a Max Guard, but no. Yeah, this is a, an interesting one. Uh, maybe seeing if he can trade uh, a little bit kind of aggressively here. Uh, looked like Rillaboom tried to use a, a fake out there, uh, which obviously wasn't wasn't going to be the one. Um, but there, the, the Volcalith lands again into the Rillaboom. That does leave Wolf uh, quite safe, actually, um, with his ability to, to fire back with, with a Volcalith of his own and, and set up, of course, that residual damage between turns, but these Colossals are not evenly matched in the slightest right now. No, Miguel's is still have has that weakness policy activated as well as the steam engine and wolf is still kind of looking at trying to be able to get that set up if necessary but at the same time i feel like when you talk about colossal and you talk about colossal on a team you don't necessarily need to have that support next to it it's all about getting the maximum value out of those dynamax turns and so wolf at this moment still has two of those left already got a chance to knock out the indeedy on miguel's side of the field um and so now we're are in this position where Miguel is down to their final two Pokemon. Um, and I believe that Wolf is as well with the Rillaboom and the Urshifu getting knocked out. Yep, both trainers down to their final two. And, and curiously enough, I mean, there is obviously a huge difference in the, the stats uh, available because of boosts on these Colossals. But Wolf still has the option to, you know, set his up uh, and <laughs> land a Surf next to it and, and go from there. The Surf, don't forget, will also do good damage to the Colossal on the opposing side. Um, and the Rillaboom's kind of in a tough position here it's not really hitting anything super effectively as it, as it may want to do so it looks like wolf uh, realizing he just has to play this one out a little bit slower um but look i mean this colossal on miguel's side uh, attacking into the opposing colossal this could be Ooh. really troublesome yeah, that's not good, especially because now wolf gets a chance to set up that screen once again and this leaves Wolf with another turn of Dynamax, where Miguel is now going to be outside of Dynamax. So this gives a lot of kind of momentum in Wolf's favor, 
uh, especially after already getting that Volcalith set up. Yeah, I mean, this uh, this turn was really, really smart by Wolf, knowing, of course, that he is going up against uh, a Colossal, already has the weakness policy, knows he needs something to help out his stats, and that's very, very smart Max Guard there. Uh, reading where, of course, he thinks the opposing Colossal is going to be attacking into allows him to set up that light screen very, very safely. That does mean he's going to be able to, to handle uh, maybe one attack from this Colossal, uh, particularly on this turn, while he has that boosted health pool because of the, the Gigantamax. And the moves a little bit weaker, obviously not being max moves. Uh, he does still have to watch out for the Rillaboom. This Dragapult uh, did take a lot of damage. There is a, just under half of its health left, but... You have to factor in that the Volcalith residual damage did that between turns. So the uh, the full kind of potential of just being able to knock out this Rillabo uh, this Dragapult may not be there. And if this Dragapult can do uh, what it needs to do in this turn, this this could be uh, very, very different. Uh, and a very quick swing of momentum, I think, for Wolf. Absolutely. Well, Rillaboom is going to move first for damage. And oh, Dragapult barely hangs on to be able to use Surf here. Miguel's... Colossal is going to protect itself uh, from that surf, but this is really important now because Co Wolf's Colossal is finally set up with that steam engine and that weakness policy boost. You also saw the timer appear on the screen. So these trainers, as you aforementioned, Adam, they really are taking all of the time in the world to make these decisions and think very, very carefully about what's going to happen. And even through the Protect, with that weakness policy boost, that's Miguel's Colossal getting knocked out just like that. Yeah, there's nothing you can do about that one. I mean, Protect was a, a fine play, but you still take damage. And uh, Wolf found his final time. I mean, very much the penultimate turn of the game to be able to say, you know what, I am just going to land. Uh, the Surf Weakness Policy Steam Engine combination and it's taken a lot of time for him to get there and set up that board but uh, it pays off in the end and just being able to do so much damage in that final turn of his Gigantamax is key to him and the momentum immediately back with him. I mean he's a still n very close to full health Colossal facing down a Rillaboom and, and it's mm -hmm. got Steam Engine. Rillaboom can only really uh, try and, and fire back with Grassy Glide so it doesn't get hit first and uh, Colossal uh, just slowing the game down a little bit saying you know what we'll just protect this turn make sure you're, you're still grassy gliding and then i'll get you next turn when it's a super easy knockout after the the g max vocal residual damage comes through yeah I mean, it'll I mean, be an easy knockout anyway yeah. yeah even at this point i think that yeah if rillaboom decide it could land an attack here i think that the g max vocalith residual damage is still just going to knock out rillaboom at the end of this turn um so yeah you, you still kind of are in this position where wolf can afford to take an attack here um or just fire back with a heat wave but yeah yep. looks like it's there gonna it be is. the heat wave there there's the heat wave it connects and, and rillaboom knocked out a, a very well played um set by both trainers uh very much jockeying position absolutely well let's jump into this game number two and see what kind of adjustments are made for this game or if it's still gonna be kind of staying the course uh it's definitely gonna be a lot of reposturing and positioning for both of these players to try to get that Colossal into the right position, but that Colossal's already hitting the field here for Miguel, but Wolf has turned the tables again, and it feels like we're seeing a reverse of what we saw in game number one, where it was Wolf that brought the Colossal at first, and it was Miguel that brought the Urshifu to kind of put the pressure on the other side. Right, and, and this, I mean, Miguel may be realizing that um, he doesn't want to get caught in a position where he's just swapping around and, and throwing attacks in, trying to find room for his Colossal to play. Maybe just trying to go for it really, really early and, and see what he can do to slow this slow this all down. Um, we may have a complete kind of mirror image of turn yeah. one last time as Colossal <laughs> lose the field in place of that Rillaboom. So it'll be curious to see how Wolf responds to his own play. Yeah, well, Urshifu does come through with the Detect, uh, and we do see the Rillaboom hitting the field for the Colossal, uh, but it does look like we are seeing a huge close combat come through from Wolf's Urshifu into Miguel's Urshifu, so it's going to bring that Urshifu to about two-thirds of its health, regenerate a little bit from the grassy terrain that's on the field, but it was really good that Wolf decided to double up just in case, you know, that Urshifu decided not to protect, and maybe that switch-in did happen. Wolf taking full advantage of the Unseen Fist ability there. Yes, you managed to avoid the fake out, but you kind of ended up in the same position anyway, uh, not respecting that that Urshifu could just attack and, and land a big close combat. Uh, now brings your Urshifu dangerously low and, of course, loses access to its Focus Sash as well. So that's forced out 
already, and uh, this could be kind of one of those turns where, where Wolf's really able to start capitalizing. Uh, there is a nice switch here to get rid of the grassy terrain, but you're, you're hurting your own Rillaboom by doing that as well. Absolutely, especially when you take a look at the fact that Miguel's Rillaboom is holding on to that choice band, and especially if you want to kind of see the grassy glides or something like that come through, you, you are kind of hurting your ability to be able to use more of that damage. But it is going to be a U-turn now coming through from Miguel, so just another kind of reposturing for position here that we are seeing on the field as Wolf has decided to bring in that Dragapult as well. He's showing that he has both of his tools to set up his Colossal again. I don't know if that's something he's doing to maybe try and intimidate his opponent a little bit and say, you know what, I did it to you in game one, I can do it to you in, in game two as well. Um, but the Dragapult's pretty safe here, um, and the Ndidi, you know, takes a little bit of damage for its trouble on the switch in. Nothing as much as that Rillaboom took. It's good to know how much those U-turns actually do. Um, you know, of course the Rillaboom holding a choice band, we see that on Miguel's side. That Rillaboom looking perilously low and, and something that maybe could be taken out of the equation a little bit earlier. Uh, something Miguel has to try and remove from the equation because if that Rillaboom's in the correct position with Grassy Terrain set up, then it's going to be able to deal with the Urshifu, and that is the one tool he has to set up his own uh, Colossal. But, you know, all of this potential repositioning does give uh, more time for this, this Dragapult to try and set things up. Well, we are going to see another U-turn come through, this time into the Ndidi. So using a super effective move into the Ndidi there to be able to rotate through and come to a new Pokemon for Wolf. And we might get a chance to see that Urshifu come back out onto the field here. And that should be able to put on some pressure onto Miguel's Colossal as it does go for a Heat Wave. But look at how little damage that's going to do. Rillaboom staying safe for the time being. Rillaboom getting out and that, that being really important, but then we also get to look at why Colossal requires that setup. It's not uh, completely uh, the, the, the powerhouse we're used to seeing it being. Yes, the Heatwave does damage, but Wolf has done such a good job there at uh, repositioning and, and making sure his board position is uh, as such. And something he's notoriously good at is, is just being conscious of uh, what's going on uh, at all times and just being able to, to make sure his, his pairing on the field are always the premium pairing. Well, we are going to see Colossal now take another switch. So it's still a rotating door of Pokemon as we continue through the first half of this game number two. And Rillaboom now hitting the field. It's going to reset the terrain once again. And, and Didi just continuing to use Follow Me here to be able to redirect the attention away from that right side of the field for Miguel. As uh, we are going to see the breaking swipe come through, which completely negates that follow me that happened. Using a spread move like that is a great way to secure a knockout as well as get some trip damage into the incoming target. Well, it's with that as well. You're, you're landing stat drops on your opponent as well. And I feel like in both games, actually, Miguel's kind of struggled against this breaking swipe. We know the breaking swipe is there. It's not something that's a mystery. They have each other's team sheets. We saw it in game one as well. And the Ndidi there follow me in, in front of the breaking swipe. Um, a little bit bold of the NDD, but you know what? Uh, I'm not the one in Players' Cup Global Finals, so uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll keep that one to myself. That said, the Colossal <laughs> is forced in, and, and once again, it's it's a Colossal uh, not next to its its preferred partner. This Rillaboom's also rather low and, and could get caught, uh, so it does start to get a little bit dicey here, I think, for, for Miguel. Yeah, I mean, I'm also just looking at the fact that you've got two Pokemon on Wolf's side of the field that can use a super effective attack against that Colossal as well. So I feel like Miguel is kind of in a situation where, well, I really want to be able to have the Urshifu next to it, but it's also really low and it makes for such a prime target. So Wolf now going to send out his own Rillaboom as we did see Miguel select to switch out his own Rillaboom for the Urshifu. So just, you know, switching just a little bit here as we do see some of the same Pokemon on both sides of the field. But Miguel is ready to go. It is time to Gigantamax this Colossal and we'll get a chance to see what it's able to do for this next turn. There's a lot of pressure riding on this Colossal, I think, to, to be able to uh, swing the game. I think Miguel, you know, already losing a Pokemon is, is a little bit on the back foot here and, and is uh, certainly going to have to find the maximum value out of these Gigantamax turns from his Colossal. Uh, that said, everything that Miguel switches in, the Urshifu and the Rillaboom now, 
if the breaking swipes keep landing, it's just gonna keep lowering their attack and just causing problems that way. I do like this uh, use of the G-Max Volcalith. I think obviously getting big damage down is, is really, really nice. We do have to remember there's a light screen in play as well. Mm -hmm. um, so really Miguel's just struggling to deal the huge amounts of damage. I mean, most importantly, the consistent between turns damage from G-Max Volcalith is gonna add up on something like this Dragapult. Um, but there's a lot of turns where Miguel's just kind of fishing for knockouts that he's not getting. And it's not quite Ooh. enough on that Rillaboom. Look how little it hung on with. Oh my goodness. That was a that was a breath holder for sure. You took a look at that and you're like, is, is it going down? It's not though. So Rillaboom holds on and is able to regain some of its health from the grassy terrain. But what's most important here, I feel like, was was Wolf might have actually wanted one of these Pokemon to get knocked out to be able to bring in Colossal or something like that. Or just, I don't know, continue to take that damage. It's kind of hard to, to say when you're in the face of this Colossal that Miguel has and you're not too threatened by it right now just because it doesn't have the weakness policy and it doesn't have the steam engine this time around. No, it's not set up yet. It is, of course, next to its premium partner in Urshifu, who could easily set that up and, and make sure that it's able to do exactly what it what it needs. But it looks like uh, Miguel is, is still just playing this one safe and saying, you know what, I don't I don't want to deal with this right now. And the Urshifu does have to respect, of course, uh, the threat of the Rillaboom on the uh, the opposing side of the field. So uh, the Rillaboom there, just trying to you know land those bits of damage uh, nice and early, and, and another turn where it's just Wolf uh, slowing things down a little bit, uh, maybe looking for his kind of pairing in the back to just sweep through the rest of this game. Right, I feel like that's still gonna be a pretty strong pairing here as you do see the Colossal on Miguel's side of the field go for the Max Quake, which will finally do enough to, to knock out this Rillaboom this turn. And that kind of puts Wolf in the position where he can start to kind of figure out exactly what, what if is in the back that is going to really make this strategy work. And Dragapult also getting knocked out here too, that vocal of damage means that you're getting two free switches here. Yeah, he gets to bring in his back pairing, and he must be confident that this combination he has in the back can do the exact work he needs. We know it's, it's going to be Urshifu as one of them. I'm not going to be shocked to see a Colossal with it. Um, and then it comes down to how well do you play this Urshifu and Colossal mirror, right? It's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Colossal on Wolf's side is full health. It is going to have a, a kind of a delayed start to its Gigantamax turns and be at full health when it starts, even though... The damage on Miguel's is very insignificant, but the Urshifu on Wolf's side is also much, much healthier than the one on Miguel's. So it will be curious to see uh, how they decide to, to play this one out. It's a tough mirror for any player, but these are both phenomenal players, and, and I mm -hmm. think we're going to see them maybe going a little bit further in their turn selections, just making sure uh, that they don't make any mistakes. Of course, Miguel does have one option over Wolf, which is the potential switch into the Rillaboom. It's not been knocked out yet, but it's not going to be particularly well received if it's in the face of a Colossal. No, definitely not. You don't want the Rillaboom to take a, something like a Max Flare on the income. But the thing here is, do you, do you, and, and he, he's actually going for it, it looks like. I wasn't sure whether or not Miguel was going to try to get this set up, but, well, I guess we're gonna have to wait to see it all play out as Wolf is going to Gigantamax the Urshifu. That's oh. definitely not something we were expecting in this mirror, but here it is. And I love this choice from Wolf. I love this choice. Yeah, the Urshifu he thinks can just win in the game. Uh, so he's, he's gonna watch Miguel set up the, the dream combination, right, of Colossal and, uh, uh, <laughs> Steam engine weakness policy, like that's all going off. But Wolf said, you know what? I'm not going to play that game. I'm going to play with my Urshifu. So yes, the the combo has gone off, and the the Urshifu, it, or the Colossal, is going to just land a big hit on the opposing Colossal. Um, but Wolf feeling confident he can sweep through the game with his own Urshifu, which is Gigantamax. Not something we we often see. Uh, no. Trading away his Colossal, letting Miguel get up another special defense boost, but saying, you know what, special defense doesn't matter when it's my Urshifu dealing all the damage. <laughs> That's also not an animation we get a chance to see every day, and that is going to be a knockout onto Miguel's Colossal. So this leaves Miguel with two final Pokemon, a very low Urshifu, as well as a low Rillaboom. <laughs> This is going to be a big ask from the Urshifu, but it's putting itself in a good position to do it, right? It's it's a Pokemon that isn't going to be bothered by the special defense buffs that the uh, Max Quakes have been giving. And both the Pokemon over on Miguel's side are, are pretty low as well. I've talked about it before that if you want to wrap up a game uh, and 
ignore your opponent potentially just being able to to mess around with protects and, and calling where you're attacking. Uh, you can't do that in the face of an Urshifu, and, and that's something that I think Wolf is looking to capitalize on by Dynam or Gigantamaxing this Urshifu, just saying, mm -hmm. you know what, uh, I'm going to hit you every turn, and I think, knowing I, I guarantee these hits on you every single turn, I think that I'm going to be able to, to keep on kind of pushing uh, against that. Well, you can see the secondary choice there on Rillaboom for Miguel. Uh, you've got Grassy Glide and Woodhammer, but it looks like Wolf is just going to opt to protect this turn with that max guard. So going to eat up these attacks and also get a chance to see exactly what Miguel is kind of locking himself into, especially with that Rillaboom, which is going to be able to deal super effective damage. You want to know right away what that is. And we know now that it is going to be that Woodhammer. That's a good bit of information for him to get and a very worthwhile use, of course, of the max guard. Just saying, you know what? Um, I want to be able to, to kind of ride this out. And most importantly, if it was Grassy Glide that he was locking himself into, he is getting rid of the terrain. Now that, of course, has a couple benefits. No priority on the, the Grassy Glide there. And of course, the damage output from these grass type attacks is gonna be a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. um, that's something really good and, and maybe the deciding factor when it comes to him uh, being able to, to wrap up this game. Obviously, the Urshifu uh, on Miguel's side did move first, but I'd be shocked to see the Rillaboom make it through this turn. No. Uh, Wolf very smartly targeting here, and now it's it really comes down to the, the health pools available on both of these Pokemon. Yeah, but the other thing about that Max Knuckle that's really important is that it's increasing the attack for when this Urshifu is outside of its Gigantamax. So you're taking a look at Urshifu versus Urshifu here. Pretty similar looking health pools, but one Urshifu has those extra stats, and we did see those stat drops onto Miguel's Urshifu. So uh, this is this is going to be close, Adam. Uh, I, think, I think Wolf has it here. I mean, the attack drop from the earlier breaking swipe is really limiting Miguel's Urshifu and, and what it can potentially do. Um, you know, it, it's basically a, a tale of, of two hits. There's the first close combat, and yeah, it's just not enough. Wolf's going to be able to immediately fire back. He's managed to, to get his Urshifu in the premium position. Um, obviously, the defenses are down too, so yeah, there it is. Wolf manages to wrap up this game with a phenomenal choice right at the end there to Gigantamax's Urshifu. Wow, what a fantastic set between these two players. And